Energize. Screen. Make it so. Screen. Come. Stand by for source of separation. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, well, so, yeah, well I haven't you checked it. Yeah, but we got various recordings from various angles. So yeah, yeah we've got we've got a, we've got a bunch of stuff. There's gonna I'm gonna cobble it's... something out of it. <laughs> I don't know what it'll be yet, but we're it's not up to it Frank, yet. Frankenstein something else yet. That hasn't happened. It's temporal. No, it's no, te- no, no. Temporal anomaly. Anyway. Welcome to How Much for Just the Podcast. Do you remember that show we used to do? <laughs> we used to do all the time. Remember that? It's a bit of a fucking retro throwback. All, 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 all the time. All the time. All the time is a bit of a stretch. It's, it's been a fucking. It's been. It's been a while since the last episode. But I'm Damo. I'm I'm, I'm Mick. And this week we're doing. Uh, we're doing the one with the whales. Star Trek Four: The Voyage Home. The one with the whales. That's what yeah. I said. Temporal context. Having just come off last week or two, doing the live. Picard season two and e- episodes Festival and the rest. Yes, it actually feels like waiting to do the voyage home until now was a good idea because there's so many callbacks to it in Picard season. Two. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Which I don't think we would have picked up on had we done this before oh, Picard. I picked up on most. I of mean, it. yeah, but it feels a lot fresher given it's like oh, yeah, yeah I mean, punk on the bus. The punk on the bus thing was very. But like you didn't pick up the uh, like the, the first time around the um. Uh, I'm 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 from Chile, but uh, and they work in space. Like you didn't pick up on that either. I did not, but again, I didn't pick up a lot of that plot line in Picard season two. Well, I really did tune out a lot of that. It felt like filler. It's it was filler. It was a season of filler. Mm. Tune in for a few episodes time when we discuss it. It'll be fun. I I went full demo rant in front of a room full of people. Yes, and. And only two of them walked out. <laughs> but yeah, Star Trek IV, the one with the whales, probably the most quotable of the Star Trek movies, you reckon? A, a, a Leonard Nimoy film. A Leonard Nimoy film, yes. yes. This is, the, this is the, the one he directed and the one that made Shatner go, well, if he gets to direct one, I get to direct one. Didn't, that didn't, of... didn't he direct three as well, but well, despite not being in it for fuck all of the time? Nimoy did, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so like, yeah, this was his second director. Yes. The yes. second one he directed. And and Shatner cracked the shits because he wanted to direct one too. Yeah. And then we got Star Trek Five. Let's do it. Did we though? Did, did we? We, <laughs> we did. Whether we wanted it or not. <laughs> what does God need with a starship? <laughs> well, we're not talking about that one. We're talking about the one with the whales. Yeah. Or um, well, the one, you know, pointedly without the whales. W- without the whales, yes. So it opens up with a. Distinct rendezvous with Rama ripoff. Yes. D- down to the design. Yeah. 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 The cetacean probe. Yeah. Rocks up the big tube. Yep. Big, big tube. Simultaneously. With the round thing. Simultaneously ripping of off both rendezvous with Rama and Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah. This is the thing. Like, <laughs> this is the second of. Like, they've made four movies at this point, and this is the second one that a random weird probe has just rocked up for no reason. Yeah. And, the, the, like, at least Vija was explained. Yeah. Cetacean Probe's never got an explanation. Yeah. This is what Star Trek doesn't do enough anymore. Is oh, just yeah, like... Are we going to do the thing where we skip to the end at the beginning? Yes, because, like, yeah, because they get the whales back and it just goes, oh, you've got whales right and fucks off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, they, they, like, it's, and it's it's never explained, but, like, the whales do the sort of, like, the, the facey-uppy thing and then the probe does the facey-uppy thing and then they, they t- chat for a bit and then everything fucks off. Yeah. It's and, and it's never explained. It goes off. Where did it go? No, like, did Starfleet track it? Did they think to go? Well, we better track where that's fucking going. Yeah. And why? Does is this is there whales in space? It's never explained. And this is a thing that Star Trek doesn't do enough anymore. Is just space is weird as shit. Some things we don't know. That's what we're out there that for. Absolutely. And anyway, but it is the second of four movies where a weird probe shows up and starts fucking shit up. Yeah. And, and and Starfleet's very defeatist about the whole thing. It's like, oh, yeah, that's getting ripped apart. Yep. Everyone just goes. Guys, we're fucked. Quarantine. Stay, stay away. away. Yep. Not like, not like, here's some data on what's going on. You might want to, like, you know, get in the vicinity and take some readings to find out yeah, in yeah. case it comes and fucks you up. If you see this coming, maybe just, like, get out of its fucking way. Yeah. Or something, anything. Yeah. Or, or if you happen to have any idea what this is at all, please help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've helped you out a bit. Come on, guys. But also, like, um, starts with the uh, Kirk and crew on the run as well from the events of Star Trek Three: yep. Search for Spock, where they stole the Enterprise, subsequently got it destroyed, stole a Klingon ship and killed the Klingon commander. Yeah. K- Klingon commander 
Doc Doc Brown. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, and oh, the, we've already touched on this. The whole you know the the Captain Bly, the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the uh, put an apostrophe in Bly, and you get yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So that was good a, old Klingon. It was going to be a space tradies thing at, at yes, some point, right, probably. Yeah. yeah. No, we're, we're not allowed to mention Klingons in space tradies. <laughs> This is technically not licensed. Buy the book, by the way. It's out, it's available now. Um, five people have bought it on. Oh. I'm pretty sure I know all of them. But I, 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 I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you bought it online? Yeah, I bought the electric book. Oh, you bought you were the e-book yeah, I bought one. the electric. Yes, yeah. I bought the electric book. Yes, yes. the electric book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um. But but we digress. We do so, digress. It is a thing that we do. But like so it. so yeah. So they run it. They they get all of the fucking cast. Everyone who was on three is on Vulcan. Yes. Everyone who survived three is on Vulcan, including well, what's her name, Savik. 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 Yeah. yeah. Savik's changed a bit. Yeah. Why 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 and why is why and why has she got a boy Klingon name? I think they just gave away that that rule. Like that that was about the point where they yeah just, it's true but. Like stopped doing that rule where all the Vulcan females are T and I, I think they found it. They may have found it a bit constricting, a little bit probably. Yeah, or maybe Savik's trans. Yeah, well, it's, but that was the other thing I was thinking. It was like, yeah, was this like yeah? Because I know there was like the whole um Topol thing, mm. possibly like you know going through Ponfar and yeah, 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 yeah. like you know maybe we mentioned maybe, the podcast maybe she maybe she maybe she she was she was a maybe it's a, like a really fucking common thing on Vulcan maybe. Yeah. Maybe the Vulcans go. Yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. not it's yeah. not logical to let someone live as a gender that they do not feel. Don't, don't go bringing logic into this. It's, it's logic. Just, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, but in, in a Star Trek context, that doesn't help anything no, because no, because you, you can say anything's logical. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like yeah, going you know flying really fast at the a, sun a, is a, logically makes you go backwards in time. A fish can be an aardvark. It's only <laughs> logical. <laughs> it's, no, I'm I'm thoroughly down with the idea that the Vulcans don't give a shit, but like yeah, the the, the fact is like it's never been in canon or anything. And just no, it, it, hasn't. it was just an odd thing that stood out was like yeah, her, her name. Yeah, and also apparently um in an earlier draft um she stayed on Vulcan because she was pregnant. Oh really? Yeah, because yeah somehow young Spock and three got through Pond Far on a planet. No one else was fucking around with yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a plot point in the movie. Yeah, no, but like, yeah, but like, yeah, the 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 original justification for her being on Vulcan was the pregnancy that they they ended up not mentioning yeah. in Voyage Home. Interesting. Um, just leaving it unanswered instead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I like that unanswered. Like, I mean, yeah. Spock, yeah. to our knowledge, never took a wife. Although Picard says when he first met Sarek. He met at his son's wedding, mm. which, I mean, Sarek's probably got a fucking seventy other other sons that he doesn't talk to. Yeah, like he he's got a fetish for secret children. Yeah. So anyway, it was it was, it was nice to have Amanda Spockington. Amanda Spockington was back. Yes, yeah. Or, original Amanda Spockington, saying, "How do you feel?" Well, the computer knows you're half human. Yeah. Doing the the quiz. I don't know if a trivia. Like test is. Oh, I mean, gonna... I, I mean, that was only there for the nice little callback at the end. Yes, yeah. Which was a nice little callback. Yeah, no. It was, it was good because you can just imagine, you can just imagine her, get, her, her skipping to the end her, now. Hey, her, her, no, can you just imagine her hearing that and going, yeah. He gets it. He gets it. Yeah. <laughs> like Spock is a little bit off in this movie because I mean, yeah, you, you would be a bit off. He's if you supposed just come back to, to be dead. in some ways, mm. and I'm, you know. I'm I'm sure the director had a word in his ear and said, you know, told him about how to play it. Do you, do you reckon? Do you reckon he would have listened to the director? Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Spock and crew, Spock and crew, Kirk and crew, Kirk and crew, heading back on the HMS Bounty. Yes, rechristened, um, Klingon bird of prey. Coincidentally, at the same time, a cetacean probe is heading to fuck shit up. Yes. And 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 Uhura picks up on this a bit too late, I think. You reckon? Yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, it takes it takes prompting from Kirk for her to, like, you know, listen to, like, you know. It's like Kirk saying, like, you know, can you check on all the frequencies and, like, as the thing. It's like, she wouldn't have just done that. <laughs> <laughs> she knows her fucking job. But why don't the Vulcans know what the fuck's happening? Like, they know what's happened in the Klingon space. They said, like, yeah. a few, like it's destroyed four Klingon ships. Uh, why don't the Vulcans know, like, just, just go, hey, guys, you might want to steer clear of Earth for a minute. Cause shit's going down. Well, maybe they didn't. Have, maybe it didn't destroy enough Klingon ships to plot a trajectory. 
<laughs> it's like, we know there's a thing out there somewhere, but, you know, it's not logical to bother you with it because you're in a, another fucking Klingon ship. If you if you bump into it, you're fucked, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, typical Vulcan bullshit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so turns out the only way to stop the station probe is to whales. Go back in time. Logically, the only solution is to go back in time. Obviously. Yeah. R- again, ripping off their own plot lines again and just going, well, we know how to fly at the sun real fast. Yeah. Interestingly, the the, the, the going back in time effects. Oh, the yeah, the reverse. The, the, the weird heads, yeah, the yeah, weird the, deformed the heads. heads and things. Yeah. That, oh, they, but, like, that's, that's like 80s fucking special effects. That's, like we, we want to do something. That's extremely early. That's I, I think it's one of the first or possibly the first job done by Industrial Light and Magic's computer graphics team. Really? Just in like when they were young, cocky upstarts that no one gave a shit about in the model shop. Fun fun bit of trivia for you. And if we're wrong about it, don't tell us. Yeah. Well, I know it was Industrial Light and Magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did it. I don't I I, know. I, 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 be, I believe it's one of their <laughs> earliest or their first contracted jobs. Yeah, right. The first job they got as the computer graphics division. Well, I mean, look... This is the, like that's probably half the budget of this movie because like the rest of it's fairly cheaply made like it's yeah. it's fairly like the the filming scenes on the the on the actual USS Enterprise took place on a naval vessel. I I had a look at the memory alpha thing about this the other day. Right, there's someone who's saying like yeah the interiors were not shot on the USS Enterprise they no. were shot on the Ranger. Yeah, I think it was. And when it's say you can tell this by the shape of the bulkheads. Yeah, it's like you've. You 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 know far too much about yeah, the shape of aircraft carrier bulkheads. There's shit, there's shit nerds out there. Like there's there's. You know, oh, I know, but it's like particularly whole... <laughs> particularly in the US, who like loves their military stuff. But yes, like that the the whole the whole movie sort of is a budget saver, which is why they did it in Picard season two, is so they could do it all modern day, and didn't have to rely too much on sets and. Like set pieces and hmm. you know location filming and that sort of thing. They oh, just yeah. filmed it in downtown LA. Yeah, I mean the, the like probably and use a lot of stock footage the same way they did with like Gary Seven in the sixties. It was Gaz, like Gaza Sev. Yeah, who's probably kicking around out there somewhere still. Well, you mentioned in the message like he's got a a bit of a connection, like, well, Roberta's got a bit of a connection to this one. That's right, yeah. Like, they, because uh, when Chekhov gets caught on the, on the Enterprise, getting the nuclear radiation or whatever to repower the ship, I'm not sure I get that either, by the way. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it like, doesn't... that's the only place that you can get radiation is on a nuclear vessel. I mean... I'm oh, sorry, nuclear vessel. This was set in like November or December, I think, of 1986. Mm. Chernobyl was right there. Right. <laughs> they given that shit away for free. <laughs> Are we calling it Chernobyl? Chernobyl, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. But yeah, like, yo, just send Chekhov to Chernobyl with a bucket. They'd just give him all he <laughs> Famously, uh, the USSR was perfectly welcoming of people without paperwork. In those days. Yeah, but from what I understand at that time, pretty much anyone who could basically hold a shovel or a bucket was just being bussed into the region to just go and scoop some shit up. Kind of, yeah. And, and and if he'd just, like, appeared with, with, a, with a bucket, <laughs> no well, one would have... Well, I'm here to shovel, <laughs> yeah. shovel the whatever. Yeah. They, 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 they wouldn't send him away. They just They wouldn't let him stop. <laughs> that would be the hard part. They, they still have to do a rescue operation. They still have to get him out of there. Yeah, but uh, it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't involve, you know, <laughs> going to the hospital after he gets knocked out. Yeah, falling over a thing, and yeah, it's the the old lady with the kidney. <laughs> Doctor gave me a pill and I grew a new kidney. <laughs> Again, the most quotable Star Trek movie. I th- like, I, th- I think, like, I quote. What? I still quote this movie. Yeah. What, what has McCoy got on his, got in his pockets on a daily basis? I mean, what, what is his everyday Corgazine. carry? What's his everyday carry load out yeah, there? Yeah. It's like kidney, <laughs> kidney pills, cordrazine. <Yeah. laughs> Dialysis, you take one of those and see me in the morning. I can, all right, fair enough. But again, like that that's the... Another thing that Star Trek sort of doesn't do a lot of these days is like the the basically technology that's magic. Yeah. It's like, here's a new kidney. 
But, I mean, oh, th- 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 this is the one thing that fucking bothers me, right? Just as a vintage computer nerd. Scotty yeah. just creating transparent aluminium on the 1986 Macintosh. Mind you, transparent aluminium had existed for about 10, 15 years know, before this movie. Just because you know how to make transparent aluminium doesn't mean you're a master at a 1986 operating system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he should have at least had to look at a fucking manual to see how the molecular assembly software worked. I, I, yeah, I think as well, like because he doesn't know how to type to start with, and he picks that up very fast. I think that's sort of just it, it's a bit of a reference to like how much smarter people are in the twenty third century that they know, can just but... pick up like how to touch type within within thirty seconds. Like, d- does... He doesn't know how to use a mouse, yeah, and then d- thirty seconds d- later d- he's type d- 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 Despite typing. Having grown up and existed entirely in a world populated by voice interactive computer systems, he can type like a motherfucker. Yeah. I can't type like a motherfucker. No, no, but this is what I'm saying. Like, it's a reference to, like, how much smarter human beings are in yeah. the future that they can, like, just pick stuff up. Like, it's... it's... Yeah, but it's the wrong stuff. It's, it's, it's a... Re- like, you can't... Typing is muscle memory. If you've never done that shit, you can't do it. Now, yes, but that's no, what I'm but saying. Being, but being smart doesn't make you a typist. No, no, like it's, it's humans are more evolved in the 23rd century. Like if you went back to 500 years ago and someone asked you how to operate a, a printing press, like you could probably work it out from the mechanics of it, whereas the the average person of the day probably couldn't. You know oh, I, mean? I don't think I could. I think the more I think uh, you've like, probably got a printing press in the backyard. <laughs> well, actually, I've seen your fucking all right, shit. All right, look, it's a bad example because my mum used to work for a printing press, like a company with like there it, was you one, go. it was one of the last movable type letter set printing joints yeah, in yeah. Melbourne, and and she worked there, and it's like I've I know, I've seen the machines, and I, I've like I, I think a better example would be send me back five hundred years, put me in front of a loom, and tell me to make a fucking carpet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, look, I'm not saying it's it's, it's it's a well it's a well made point, but I think that's the whole point of that scene. Oh, I that... know that's the point. I'm just saying it pisses me off. <laughs> also, that wasn't supposed to be a Macintosh. Apparently, that was. But I, 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 I'm not sure if it was going to be one of the next computers, one of Jobs's things, or whether it's an IBM PC. Yeah, but anyway, I do know there's an apocryphal story about someone from Apple actually getting in on the loop of this happening and going, I'm going to run down there with a fucking Macintosh for them. Oh, really? I'm pretty much just going, yeah, we're going to get a Macintosh in the movie, yeah, we're going to fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Was that the first product placement tie-in that Star Trek's done? Oh, no, there's actually a whole bunch of shit, like... Well, actually, it's an, it's an early one, but there's there's actually a section, I think, about product placement that actually mentions this. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Because um, the fact that... um. Dr. Gillian, no, I'm a Dr. Gillian, I'm a whale biologist. Yeah, yeah. Um, it names names a specific brand of beer when she's ordering the pizza. Oh, really? Yeah, she was asking for a Michelob or something. And okay. So she said, I want this pizza in a Michelob. And like that was like, it wasn't just a beer, it was a, it was specific, a specific beer. beer yeah. And that was like a very early example of like, whoa, hang on, brands in Star Trek? You know, mm. just, yeah. But then, but like prior to this movie, has there was no? There I'm any? just saying. I don't think. I think that was some of the point that that hadn't happened before, and this is where some of it started. And yeah, yeah, saying, yeah. You know, like you know, Kirk's got a fucking Nokia phone, and yeah, <laughs> yeah I know you love that one. No, <laughs> don't fucking get me started on that. I don't know. Like, uh, see, I kind of appreciate that in universe, like going into. Because, like, if you walk into a pub and say, I'll have a beer, like they do in the television shows, mm. and like in, in movies and whatever, they'll go, more specific, mate. What the fuck are you talking about? There's fucking uh, 15 beers on tap. Uh, uh, what uh, beer uh, do you want? A large one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so, so going in there and saying, I've got a preference for this beer, that, that's not exactly a stretch. So like, that, that's not gratuitous in my mind. Mm. The Nokia thing, that's gratuitous. Yeah. But, like, the the like going into it and, and going, can I have a Heineken or can I have a, a, fur, a Furphy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So ordering a, a beer in a restaurant, like a specific beer in a restaurant, that makes sense to me. That's not gratuitous, but to, the Nokia thing just bothered me. Yeah. But they're really fucking slack about trying to maintain any kind of cover. Like, if anything, this movie is sort of very much uh, shows how much of a fucking cowboy, like 
Kirk and crew were. They didn't give a fuck about the rules. They didn't give a fuck about... Yeah. It's not even just about the temporal stuff, but, like, about basically everything. They, yeah. they didn't give a shit about stealing the Enterprise and getting it blown up. They didn't give a shit about, you know, going back for a court-martial. It's just like, yep, that's that's fucking what we do. Yeah. But, like, it, it's they've always done this. And, like, realistically, they haven't saved the universe exactly. Like, like they've, they've been invo- involved in a lot of, like, quintessential... Star Trek events. They've, yes. they've done a lot of exploration. They were there for the Organian Treaty that stopped the war with the Klingons for however many years. Was the Organians the fucking light bulb people? Oh, yeah, fucking... No Whatever idea. they are. Anyway, the, 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 the light bulb people that, uh, that stopped the war with the Klingons, they've been involved in a lot of stuff, but, like, have they saved all life in the universe? This is the thing, like, because most of what Kirk and co. did was, like, Explore strange new worlds, just mm. like oh, yeah. there, there's a planet, there's weird shit yeah. going on there. Let's have let's check it, it wasn't, out. It wasn't high stakes existential it wasn't high, crap. It wasn't yeah. high stakes universe ending. This is like it, it sounds like me having a whinge, but like this, this is what Star Trek's sort of missing these days because it's all fucking universe altering, high stakes, like fucking. Yeah, that that sort of shit, like that that sort yeah. of you know, instead, instead of like stumbling onto gangster planet and having to get yourself out of it again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's, instead of just like saving a woman from certain death, and it turns out she's a war criminal, and so are we doing the right thing and having that little moral dilemma and that sort of thing. That's what Star Trek used to be about back in the sixties, mm. back back when Kirk and crew were around. Yeah, but like they're still revered and whatever because it, they were it, the was, it was more, the it was more tightly episodic though, because like yeah, that was all in uh, like and, and like uh, hey, we're in the streaming era now where everyone wants to, like, you've got to keep them engaged to watch the whole thing in one sitting. Yeah, and but, like, I... I no, I, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just no, saying... No, no, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, but, but, like, I, I also blame the whole fucking... It's it's just, like, it's scope creep. Like, it's the same as, like, um, like Batman used to be a detective who used to solve crimes, like, street-level crimes. Mm. Now he's saving the world from fucking doomsday. Do you, do you know how hard that is to write compelling detective stuff? That's, uh, that actually takes professional writers to come up with, <laughs> like, problems and solutions. No, look, I, I blame the big, like, like the, 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 the big screen movies. Mm. Like, the, for, for, like, the Batman's cre- scope creep. Like, he, yeah. he was just a really good detective and a martial artist. And, and, and so, like, suddenly it's all bat shark repellent spray. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even... Th- like, it's, <laughs> the, 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 it's, it's fucking nuclear bombs and fucking blowing up the city and, and like, global altering fucking mm. shifty stuff. It's like, have him solve a crime. He's the world's greatest detective. Same as fucking, like, Wolverine used to be a guy just, just like, used to heal kind of fast. Mm. Now he can regrow his entire body from a single cell. Mm. It's scope creep. Mm. Like, the, the, the longer something goes on, the, the higher the stakes need to be. I mean, I, I'm sure this has been done. In 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 and explored somewhere. I'm I'm just wondering if you know about it. Like, have they have they answered the question? Like, if you chop Wolverine in half, do you get two Wolverines, or does the legs grow another pair of legs? And you know, you know is it is it like the whole cutting I a worm it's... in half thing? And just like because one, if you cut a worm in half, the tail's supposed to grow another tail or something. Yeah, oh, that's something like that. Too. I'm just wondering if Wolverine, if he cut his legs off, does his legs grow another pair of legs? Yeah, and no. you're just like this four legs just twitching on. The... <laughs> <laughs> I think because like comic books gets re- retconned and fucking re- rehashed and redone all over the place. At one point in the canon, um, Wolverine had a a master cell, like a one cell that was the true Wolverine, and that was the bit that regrew everything. So as long as that cell existed, he could regrow from that. But if that one cell was destroyed, then no more Wolverine. I, I think that was a thing one time in the comic books. I think it's since been retconned out because it's stupid Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I have notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's dark. I, 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 look, I hope you're sitting down for this, but some, some things that have happened in comics are fucking dumb as shit. No way. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I know. I, I think that was like mid-80s, mid-90s yeah. that that fucking came across. Yeah, but see, that, that was a good year. I mean, uh, look, I'm probably biased because, like, mid-80s was, like, you know, my, you know, you know early teens kind of years, my prime comic book experience. Mid-80s was when I was born. Quiet, you. <laughs> 
Um, um, so, yeah, that was my prime comic book era. And I remember, like, being really into the Superman comics of the era. Was that... Um, which was all, like, the different colours of kryptonite doing weird shit. Oh, yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Fortress of Solitude with all the weird alien crap, you know, in, like in his trophy hall and mm -hmm. and Superman because he's super can just build a fucking robot mm -hmm. you know just because he's got a super brain yeah yeah that kind of off the wall comics bullshit is my jam that sh that's the way it should be no, no, the, not not this gritty the, realism uh, shit yeah well, <laughs> well the, the the time that Superman gained the power to create a miniature version of himself but then he got jealous of the miniature version of himself so he kept trying to get it killed <laughs> True, like he he used to shoot it out of his brain, out of his hand, and like he, a little Superman would fly out of his hand and go punch up the bad guys, and then he'd fucking reabsorb it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's the best. Super thing. ventriloquism was that 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 that, 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 that feels like a, a red kryptonite side effect. That, Did that, you know, that it was it was just just a powery development. Oh no, but like normally when they gave him matchup powers, it was like it was like there was some kind oh, of yeah. like red kryptonite encounter, just like yeah. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this, just like, this, they just... this was like more like no rhyme or reason. It's just, it yeah. happened one day. And then he, he uh, but at the end of the issue, he winds up getting little Superman killed mm. and then is all upset about it. Cause like little Superman's got, going like, I just wanted to help. And like, and it's like, oh, and now I can never do it again. Next issue. Next <laughs> issue. Yeah. Next issue. I'm going to pretend to be brain dead. So, so Lois Lane will fall in love with me. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm just, and I'm, I'm just going to use my super. I'm just going to use super speed to like just rip out and trip Jimmy Olsen over. For yeah. like, <laughs> Superman <laughs> used to be such a dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like a, I'm teaching you a lesson by fucking just psychologically torturing those closest to yeah. me. Yeah. No, it was awesome. Yeah. And 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 honestly, the closest we've ever come to it recently is the Supergirl, the, the CW Supergirl. Yeah. The first couple of seasons of that. They they went for it a couple of times. They it was it was proper off the wall shit. Yeah, yeah. it was it was all alien weird shit and yeah. dimensional weird dimensions. I, and I, it was I like, only watched the first two seasons. Yeah, so. f forget all the fucking like yo know, deep character drama and like yo know, fucking crossovers. When when Supergirl was doing off the wall alien weird shit flying around on Earth, that mm. was gold. They 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 really got the closest to proper live action Superman there's ever been. They just finished filming the last season of Superman and Lois. Oh yes. And uh, so, so the CW DC shows officially done. Yeah, I, I, the Superman and Lois, I really like that. Yeah, uh, that, I, I haven't watched it. It's worth it because, like, best characterization of Superman I think ever. Mm. Um, get 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 him, mate. Fuck off, Cavill or whoever the fuck you're talking about. Just just promote him to the fucking movies. Yeah. Just just really good Superman. Really ha obviously has really thought about it. And, That's and what just, you need. Yeah, and just like, you know, because I'm a guy who can't possibly be hurt, but I love people who can. That's the core of it. Yeah, there you and, go. And he's fucking got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing. That's the crux of it. It's like so, somebody put it on the internet, like like because um, a lot of people misunderstand Superman as, as going would wouldn't it be good to be super powerful? And that that's not the point of Superman. The point of Superman is what if someone that was super powerful was good? Yeah, that's the fucking crux yeah. of it. Yeah, and we know from real life that the super <laughs> powerful, powerful don't tend to be that fucking good for anyone mm. except themselves. Anyway, Star Trek, eh? Yeah, super powered thing sounds like Big Khan to me. Yeah, no, that was that that was that, that was the tie-in, wasn't it? One of the novels about Khan was, oh, was yeah. like we had Roberta and Gary Seven picking the, up the, Chekhov's shit. The yeah. rise of Khan. Yeah, the rise of Khan. Scene. Yeah. What 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 would we get to, as far as discussing? Well, they've met they've met a whale biologist. Yeah, yeah. Coincidentally, yeah. Just they, went to went to Sea World and met her, <laughs> and said Spock goes for a swim. Mind melds with the whale. Yeah. Finds out that Gracie's pregnant. Yes. And then they don't get arrested somehow because the whale biologist is, is nice. It's like, oh, you've been very naughty on your way, you, you scamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, a, there was a deleted scene apparently with Sulu meeting his great-great-grandfather. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like, that was only deleted because the kid actor they hired froze up on the day. Oh. There was like... 
Yeah, so George was like there or there for it. He was just like, yeah, going to bump his little kid. This little kid was going to ask him some question. It was like, it was, oh, what's your name? It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm Akira Sulu or something. And it was like, and they had a little chat and, um, and someone, and, you know, they're saying, Sulu, who, who was that? Was, oh, that's my great, great grandfather, I think. <laughs> and again, it was like, it was a light, fluffy, throwaway bit. It wasn't a kind of like, oh my God, I've corrupted the timeline. It was so like, much of it is. Like, it was so just like, the... it was just like Sulu having a great little moment of going, ah. <laughs> so much of the interactions that the crew have with like people of the then modern era of the 1980s are just sort of fun little throwaway. This is the thing about the whole, the whole movie that... Star Trek for the voyage home is kind of a, a, a bit of a tonal reset mm. for this. Like it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It's a fun yeah. movie. It's probably, this is probably why it's one of the most popular of the Star Trek movies because mm. it's a lot of fun yeah. and you, you're coming off the fucking high stakes of the, the motion picture, which was like the, a cinematic fucking 2001, a space odyssey thing. Then you had, um, ha- had Wrath of Khan, which was like super, which was like, Submarine warfare in space, mm. and then you had a Search for Spock, which was was like still also very high stakes. The the Enterprise gets destroyed, a um, bit of an action sort of fighty thing, and yeah. and like so so again very high stakes. This is kind of a tonal reset in that like it's much more light hearted yes. than the previous entries have been. It's just like okay, well, let's just have a rest for a minute and let's have some fun. Yeah, and like yes, there's still the high stakes of you know. Earth getting destroyed, but for the most part, that doesn't play into the fucking yeah plot. I I really do like how there the the ticking clock literally isn't ticking during the course of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah because like yeah, you know, they've gone back in time, so it's like yeah, you know, we don't know how much time actually elapses in in the future. Like yeah, you know, presumably not a lot. Yeah, well, it, it, like because well, it's Spock's aim to get him back to the exact point. Yeah, but like he. <clears throat> doesn't have all the variables to calculate it directly, so he has to take his best guess. Yeah. And so that's brilliant, Mr. Spock. Like, yeah. Because you, your best guess is, is your your best guess is, like... You've got, you've got a Superman brain. Why yeah. don't you go and build us a fucking robot? Boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, so their aim is to get get them back to the the exact same point that they left. But, like, the, the main ticking clock, of the, like, plot-wise, mm. is the whales being released into the yeah. wild. Like, releasing a pregnant whale into the into the wild. And this is all sort of pre-Blackfish, too, where, you know, everyone was is now in agreement that keeping whales in captivity, bad thing. Yeah. Not good. No. Don't do it. No. But, I mean, there was a kind of a nod to that as well. It was yeah. like kind of like no whale born in captivity has ever survived. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah, that's a, yeah. they need to go back. Yes. Yeah, we need to, they need to be in an ocean, not in a tank. Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that, that's part of the, the whole thing. But like, yeah, but yes, there, there still is like. Now, if only the oceans weren't filled with microplastics. Oh, no. That's another problem for a different technology. Yes, absolutely. But um, like, I'm, 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 imagine if, like, a space probe from like a microplastic civilization had rocked up and said, "Where's all the microplastics? <laughs> we're we're going to burn the uh, we're going to burn your planet until you like you know, give us some microplastics." <laughs> and, and it's like, well, we got rid of those years ago. It's like, well, we're, your planet's just fucked now, isn't it? <laughs> we're, we're burning it ourselves for, as fast as we possibly can <laughs> um, by making microplastics. So, so, like, so the whole ticking clock is that. Kirk wants these specific whales because they're there. They're, like, it's convenient for them. Yeah. They could go to the open ocean and just yeah. find some. Well, I mean, if they'd actually done any kind of caring about, you know, the timeline or things, maybe they could have just gone, well, we know there's no... They, these two were tracked and we know that they disappeared from tracking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they I mean, could have done that, but that would have been inconsistent with everything else they'd done so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's, it's <laughs> like... Oh, yeah, you, you, like, you can patch over any, any, like, holes in the timeline that you can you know, make whatever mental leap you can, but, mm. like, realistically, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Well, like, like, none of it had any real effect on the timeline in, in the end. Yeah. Like, they landed a fucking bird of prey in a park and, like, landed near some garbage men who fucking saw some oh, shit yeah. go down. Yeah, no, I I, th- I think the reason it works in this is that at least they're consistent about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like if they'd... If they at any one point talked about time paradoxes or preserving continuity or whatever, it would have blown the whole fucking thing out of the water because of all the times they didn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they didn't. They just went, they just rolled with it. Kirk's a fucking cowboy, doesn't give a shit. It's purely in character. Yeah. All, all these people are just getting the job done. They've come to 1986. They're going to get them some whales and go yeah. and save the future. That's that's what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Like, 
this was a plan they came up with on the spot with no briefing or thought whatsoever. It was like, oh, geez, there's no whales anymore. I know when there used to be some. Mm-hmm. Let's, right, we're doing it in, yeah. a, in a ship we've stolen. In a ship we've stolen and can barely fly. Great stuff. <laughs> Fucking wonderful. <laughs> Sulu's just flying a helicopter over a cloaked ship they're fucking yeah. pulling the fucking yeah because uh, yeah, you just talk someone into letting him have a go yeah. <laughs> it's just fun it's it a is. fun move like Star Trek doesn't I, have to be fucking so sorry, sorry don't don't interpret any of these points I'm making as criticism. Oh, no, no, no. No, just fucking gold. All, all of it gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like it's, but, but it is very much like the that if you did that in a Star Trek episode now, yeah. people will go, hey, you fucking can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they've even already yeah. called that out in DS9 with the whole fucking, like, yo, temporal yes. teams. Like, they've they've called themselves out on it and gone, oh, that Kirk, he was a... Uh, ra- but that I'm Kirk, not- he was a rascal. We yeah. hate him in temporal division. I'm, I'm not even talking about, like, the... Mm. Like, in-universe, mm. they wouldn't do it. I'm, I'm saying that, like, if you did it in an episode of Discovery, mm. like, the fucking canon nerds would, would like crack the shits yeah. and just go no that didn't happen you can't do that yeah. because of this this that and the other it's like just go with the story mate yeah. have some fun yeah sit back relax at least, at least they can do that in lower decks i'll wait no they can't because they cancelled it fuck. fuck i'm still angry about that i'm still angry that they cancelled lower decks are they, are they still in production for for the last season or is it like have they committed <laughs> have they started like the the, the the voice acting's done I think they're still animating it for, right. for the last season but they weren't told that it was their last right. season so there's not going to be a, a neat tied up ending and, based and, on a pun- and, and, and like what I'm mostly pissed off about is the potential for the Damo and Mick back going cameo yes well it's do. like <laughs> just fuck that yeah it's like yeah God damn it. But if they're still animating, there's a chance, right? Well, look, going off the, like, a post that Jack Quaid did on Instagram, like, mm. after the announcement, like, he mentions that, like, ho- hopefully we find a new home. So, like, there may be a potential that it gets picked up by Netflix or... Because or, Netflix picked up uh, Prodigy after it got cancelled. Well, that's going to start airing soon, I Very think. soon, yes. Yeah, probably after Discovery finishes. Yes. Yeah, because they don't want to... Having the, the, yeah, because having having two Star Trek shows on at once, whoa, hey, <laughs> that'd never work. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I I I have a playlist that interleaves the overlapping TNG and DS Nine oh. Discovery things in. So when we get up to that, when we get up to that, in, I'm, I'm I'm ready in about in about ten years yeah, or so. You, you, <laughs> watch out for that in about thir- three hundred episodes. Yeah, when 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 we are. Uh, Old and decrepit. I, I don't know. I reckon I reckon in about 15 years, mm. when I retire, I reckon our production rate's going to kick up a bit. I'm still going to have to work. Yeah, but I'm, I, I, but I'm doing all the editing stuff. So, yeah, like, well, you know, true. it's like, you know, or unless, like, yeah, we get a big enough following to, like, hire an editor and all we have to do is sit in front of microphones <laughs> every couple of weeks, spout some shit, hand it all over to some eager young space cadet and go, just make something out of that, will you? Just cheers. Thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. And then and we, and we just go sit back and count the money. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with sitting back and counting money. Yeah. yeah. I've got nothing. Like, it's, it's very, it's, it doesn't take long for me to count no. Right now. But um, it's just fun. It's a fun movie, and I think that's why it's most popular. I, I, look, I, I think that's why it's probably the most quotable. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Because it's, it's got a feeling of, like, yo, there was a script, mm. and then someone came through and made the dialogue sound like it was coming out of human beings. <laughs> and... Loosened it up a bit. Yeah, well, I mean, there's because the, the, there's the, five the, writing credits on. Yeah, because I mean, the structure of how it plays out could have been very tonally different oh, yeah. easily. Yeah, for sure. There, there was obviously oh, some of that's going to be down to the director, some fucking nobody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what would the director know about the characters? But obviously, like you know, this dry, logical dude who has no sense of humor and is like you know, probably never even heard of like you know. To coin a random example, do like a crazy happy song about Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> Betty directed that video. So. <laughs> Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so whales. And they're only in the ocean bloody five minutes before they get attacked by fucking whalers. Yeah. Do you reckon the whalers had the radio frequency? Oh. 
It was an inside job. It was an inside job. That was set up. That was it was a setup. From the that's start. why they, that's why they pulled the whales out to release early. Yeah. Someone yeah. was paid off. The whalers paid them off. It was that fucking guy, the guy with the, with the, who's telling fish stories. There's a whole fucking dark subplot in this. Yeah, there it is. It was like fucking, yeah. It's the and... Borg Queen, probably. <laughs> it's always the fucking Borg Queen. The Borg Queen, instead of going back and assimilating the past, she decided to fucking destroy the whales. <laughs> she wanted to destroy the whales so that Captain Janeway was never born. <laughs> This goes all the way to the top. <laughs> all the way to the all the way all, to the fucking Borg Queen. All, all the way to the bottom of the ocean? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What else is going on? What, what else? This is all that we have for Star Trek canon in the 80s, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. We have nothing, no else, no other clue, because otherwise it's kind of business as usual in parallel with our own timeline, because like, they haven't done any eugenics shit even in the original series until the 90s. Yeah, the, 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 original, day, the, the, the original year for the eugenics wars was 1996. Yeah. Um, and then when Voyager went, went back for Future's End, which will be next episode, mm-hmm. um, that was sort of basically retconned out that the eugenics wars didn't happen then. Mm. Uh, they happened in the early 21st century. Mm. Um, then it was sort of retconned that the eugenics wars sort of spawned out of World War Three, Which will be along any minute now, I believe. Any minute now. <laughs> Just give it five minutes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, as far as canon in the eighties, that that's the only thing. There is that little 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 bit at the start when Spock's doing his his pop quiz to make sure his brain's not fucked. Mm. Um, it does say what's the significance of the Earth year nineteen eighty six, and like th- that's probably just foreshadowing that mm. that's when they're going back to. But also, it does imply that something else significant happened in mm. nineteen eighty six that w- was somehow impactful enough to be recorded in a Vulcan database. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that's just when fucking FBI agent from Picard season two met the Vulcans. Who fucking knows? <laughs> but. Yeah, because those Vulcans were fucking busy. They came They came here a lot. Yeah. A lot. Almost like some kind of fetish. I mean, deep down they like us. They do. They do. They wouldn't stick it. They wouldn't keep us around. No. Otherwise. No, we're not in. We're not quite in X Files era yet, but there is like a young Fox Mulder kicking around somewhere. Oh, yeah. of like who could just like stumble. It's about up. about when his sister got kicked. Yeah, it's just like yeah, it's about the right time for some Vulcans to like you know come and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th- those universes are primed and ready to cross over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I'm sure there's a comic series that's done it. No, uh, Crusade did it. Hmm? Crusade. Which Crusade? L- 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 like. Babylon 5 yeah. sequel series, Crusade. Yeah, no, that had, one. Had an episode where, uh, like, the the Excalibur went to an alien planet and they had, like, th- like they were the aliens and then they had, like, alien Fox Mulder and, and Dana Scully. No, I vaguely recall the, that, the, yeah. Like, it was basically an X-Files episode from the perspective of the alien right. to the point where they had the smoking man at the end. That was like in a conspiracy. With, okay, you know. I didn't, I didn't catch that at the time, but yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, it was just no, like, it was, it was full on like a yeah. basically the the same show. Like was a yeah. direct, like homage. like like I think I mentioned, I uh, the X Files was a phenomenon I missed. Yeah, at the time, I uh, remember being big into it. Yeah, and like I was, it was one of the first shows cause, that like I went down a rabbit hole of you know trying to theorize of where it was going and yeah. whatever, and then. It, it turned out that they were just making it up as they went along and that just sort of yeah annoyed me. Then I just fell out of it. Then I stopped watching. Yeah. And, and like that's how most shows are made, except for Babylon 5. Babylon 5 is about the only one that has been made yeah. where they've had a plan. Yeah. Lost didn't have a plan. Fucking Arrow didn't have a plan. None of the shows that have this sort of five-year plan have any sort of semblance of a plan. God, They're I... making it up as they go along and that, from a my brain perspective bothered me <laughs> no no i completely get it i mean i'm still fingers crossed about severance severance yeah i haven't watched it so oh they just wrapped filming on season two it was like massively disrupted you know second season filming they've just finished wrapping wrapped that up but season one phenomenal excellent weird world building hints of like a deep thing and i'm just praying that they've come at it with an eye. The, 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 they know the, where they're going. It's not just a setting that they've actually, they, they've, they fleshed out the background yeah. that they are working in. Yeah. I, it feels like they have, but so many things that haven't have felt like that in season one. Yeah. Yeah. Heroes was another one. Mm. 
Heroes was really great for the first season, but they had no idea where they were going after that. Oh, then the, the writer's strike happened, and... Oh, the, like, Heroes, those, like, you know, suffered from, like, you know, having too good a villain. Yeah. They, they, and they couldn't... They couldn't abandon their great villain. And, and they, they refused to... Like, so they had to defang him and take away all... Basically the, neuter him, yeah. Yeah, to be able to keep him around. Yeah. But that was the huge mistake there. If they just, like done something else, anything else, just tried, it's, just, yeah. just just gone for any other fucking thing. I, look, I, I, it's, I still think, like, if they had a plan for that, mm. like like defanging the villain and, like, having it be... Like, yeah. like, there, there's character motivation reasons, there's story reasons that you can do that and yeah. have it be great. Like Storm in X-Men 97, mm. losing her powers. It's, I don't know if you've watched it. No, I haven't, no. It's quite good. Um, but... Like there's story reasons where you can do that and make it make it compelling, but they had no reasons. They had no like the first first season was a self contained story, and it's a shame they never made any more. Yep. It was one of the it's it's one of those situations. Just yeah, don't absolutely. bother watching past the first season. No, first season's fucking almost perfect, and the rest of it's just shit. Yeah. Also, there's some racism involved. Oh no! Oh my god! Okay, the character of Dr. Taylor was originally a male character who was a wacky college professor who was a UFO nut, and they intended to cast Eddie Murphy. Oh, my God. Just make it a full-on screwball It would have just been a full-on fucking... Beverly Hills fucking... Murphy Murphy was a huge Star Trek fan and approached Nimoy and Bennett about a role, and... um, Later, he decided to appear in The Golden Child instead. A decision, oh, he, admi- bud. A decision he admits later was a big mistake. <laughs> bud. So, so who was he supposed to play? The, the, like the, the lady doctor? The, like, yeah, the, the, he was the, 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 the whale. whale, whale, the, whale the, local, the, 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 the local, the 20th century local right. role was a UFO nut local. Right. Played by Eddie Murphy. That should have happened. Particularly like if you, if you know he's like the, the, he approached them and wanted to do it. Like I, I'm, I'm on board with that. It, it's, it's like if they went to him and and like he's gone. I don't even know anything about Star Trek. Then, then no. But like I, I like the idea of someone who's a big name and a Star Trek fan Star Trek going. Fan. Oh God, can I please do a? <laughs> yeah, like, like I'm, yeah. I'm. Like what's his face from the latest season of Discovery? Um, the director. Um, who's the weird shadowy fuckwit? Oh, there we go. I so say Nicholas Meyer was came in to write the 20th century section of the film. Yeah, so the, what it's quoted here is, Nicholas Meyer later stated when he came in to write the 20th century section of the film, he realised earlier drafts were written with Murphy in mind. Ah, oh, right, yeah. So it's entirely possible he did the whole, you know, writing the human beings part mm. rather than the plot. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, Nicholas Meyer's been, uh, uh, like, because he directed Wrath of Khan, he has been he's, was involved in the writing of, well, obviously this one, and Undiscovered Country, I think, but also, like he, he's he's currently on the writing staff of Discovery. Like he's been mm. with Star Trek for fucking ages. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I'm just like I, I was always. I was wondering, like, what bit was him? Whether it was like, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, I've got, I've got a feeling it may have been dialogue polish. Mm. Would have been, you know, yeah, possibly, yeah. David Cronenberg, my brain, no work. Yeah, so like I'm on board with it. Same yeah. as for- okay. Yeah, I, this is this is the bit I was like talking about before. Okay. I'm I'm imagining the voice of the person writing this very very stereotypically and badly, and unfairly. Um, okay. <clears throat> the aircraft carrier sequences were actually formed aboard the conventionally powered Forrestal class carrier USS Ranger. Ranger can be distinguished from Enterprise by her longer rectangular superstructure, barely visible behind the hair of Nichelle Nichols, and different arrangement of aircraft elevators. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. <laughs> when a Star Trek movie gets, I'm actually by a different, different class of nerd. There's probably some crossover. There's, there's bound to be some crossover. Do, 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 just like nerd sniped from an unexpected direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Robin Williams was the other one that I'm disappointed at. That I, I only found out recently that you know, the what's his face, the time traveler Rasmussen from from the 22nd century yeah. was supposed to be played by. Uh, Robin, Robin, Robin Williams, Williams yeah. That would have changed the episode entirely. Oh, yeah. It would have been glorious. Same as the fucking Jerry, Le- Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah, the, being the, the nightclub the comic. The role and... that was written for Jerry Lewis and he didn't want to do it. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and we ended up with some... Some fuckwit. Fuckwit 
pretend Which doing a great. very bad parody of a nightclub comedian. And it's it, and it's only fucking season one episode, but so so you can take it with a grain of salt. But still, it was also if it had been someone recognisable, it might have <laughs> I don't know, it wouldn't have changed it, but it would have made it sort of somewhat legitimate. All 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 Enterprise sailors and Marines were played by Ranger personnel. In certain scenes, a freeze frame reveals sailors wearing Ranger ball caps rather than Enterprise. Oh ones. no! What a goof! What just a like, what a what a what a blooper! What a fucking just like sitting there freeze framing, going like oh, they should have known I was going to do this. <laughs> 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 oh, that's a technicality and a half. Mm-hmm. The, the Voyage Home is the first Star Trek production to be directed by a member of the main cast. While Leonard Nimoy had also directed the previous film, he was not a member of the main cast, only appearing at the end. Right. So how many? Because they didn't want to. They didn't want to blow in. Blow the spoiler that Spock's going to be in the movie. Re- the search for Spock. Hmm. I mean, like it's the same as the. The same thing pissed me off with the fucking marketing for the Justice League movie, the mm. Zack Snyder one. It's like, we know Superman's going to be in it. Yes, he died in the last one. Does it matter? It's a fucking comic book well, movie. Superman, He's got to come back. Superman dies all the time. Not quite as often as Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime yeah. sacrificing himself for fucking the greater good is like his fetish yeah. at this point. But, but 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 the death of Superman isn't a surprise anymore. Exactly. We all they 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 sold the doubt once, once, once. They sold it once, and and he was dead for was, twelve months. And and but uh, his comic kept going in four different fucking iterations. Yeah. For those twelve months. Yeah. And then, surprise, I'm back in a black suit with a mullet. No, it's not a surprise, but, yeah. you know, it was... It, but, it, but it only works once. Yeah. That's why the marketing for, like, Justice League bothered me. I mean, let's face it, the whole fucking movie bothered me. But the the marketing for it in particular was just like, we know he's going to be there. Yeah. We know he's going to be there. Just, like, put him on a poster. Don't put him in the trailer if you don't want to. Yeah. But put him on a poster. Just, just put us in charge of all the movies, please. Put us in charge of everything. I will take money for anything. Give me money. Yeah. Subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah. Click the link below. And, oh, sorry. Every time. Every time. <laughs> uh, I, I believe. I, I believe that. I believe the short link that, for that is grouse.au slash dmcu. But if it's not, and you just heard that. It is. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't hear that, it's not. <laughs> Weird how that works. <laughs> but also, I need to like destroy the whole Pretty Grouse site and redo it because I've I've got a, I've got a plan. Oh God! But like the Cylons? Yeah, I was going to say it's a better it's a better one than the Cylons had. You sure. Yeah. Because okay. it actually exists. You actually have. One. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, fucking TV series that supposedly had a plan, for, like a plan plotted out. Another one that was make, making shit up as it went. Yeah, oh, mind man. you, like I, yeah, BSG up to the last season, right? Yeah, loved it. Look, I I had my problems with the ending, but I've, I've softened over on it over time. Same as the Lost ending, like mm. the ending of Lost. I've sort of sort of softened on it over. over I, time, I but... never I never had much of a problem with the ending of Lost, given what Lost was. Yeah. By that point, it was like it was fine for what it was. Yeah. Um, it could have been more, but by that time, it already wasn't. I I think the the point with Lost, the whole point with Lost, that sort of got lost. No. Ah. Was like, like it was about the characters. It was about the individual yes. characters, and it wasn't about the shit that was happening to them. Yeah. The weird shittery. The 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 fucking weird fuckery that went on on the island yeah. wasn't the point of it. Oh, yeah. And we as audience members, as nerds, wanted there to be a point because we wanted an explanation. But you don't need an explanation. It's not about the explanation. It's about what how those characters react to the weird fuckery. I get that more now than I did when I watched the show. No, I, mean, I was the, pissed off when the I mean, though, 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 maybe like, yeah, the real show is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> or not <laughs> but no I remember like when, when I was watching Lost week by week 
Mm-hmm. The highlight of each one was when they'd give you a new piece of backstory for like, you know, one mm. of the characters like you finally get to see, oh, this is this is Hurley's flashback. Excellent. Like, I want to yeah, see yeah. this. And it's like, oh, oh fuck, you know, he you know, locks in the fucking wheelchair now. So it's like, you know, this is the bit where it's like, you know, you know just like putting those backstory pieces together was the best part. Yeah, yeah. The, the, like the... So like the story was all up to the point Lost happened. Yeah. And putting that together week by week was excellent. Yes. But, yeah, when they ran out of that stuff. <laughs> We've got a season about a hatch. I mean, honestly, I think that was very well done, the way they spun that out. Mm. Like, the, the, it was too dragged out. Like, it was no, too I, fucking, I, I, I don't, oh, we're keeping don't, the hatch a secret, but we don't know what's in there. I don't know. I kind of thought, like, for the most part, that pacing and holdback was done well. Mm. Um, I thought it was a very, very good example of writing that kind of stuff and you know, doing that kind of stuff. It didn't work in every single episode. It was it was definitely done too long. But I think it was a very good and worthy of study example of how to, like, take a small thing mm. and, you know, draw, uh, d- draw a lot around it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair. Um, and, you know, it's, I can't think of an, another example where they've done better on that kind of thing. It's certainly one of the best examples of it. Yeah. There's still room for improvement. Yeah. But, well, who was the guy that made that? They should put him in charge of something else. Probably. Yeah. I reckon he's got some ideas. Yeah, go <laughs> Get him on the blower. <laughs> Dear Sir Slashback. <laughs> was it Damien, Damon Lindelof? Mm-mm. Damon Lind- Lindelof. He, he Lind- did the... Lindelof. 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 Little of what? Nothing. Little of. Um, <laughs> he did the Mrs. Robbins, Mrs. Davis? Yes, I yeah. believe so, yeah. That was very good. Mm. And and the Watchmen TV series. Yeah. And, and again, both of them, one season, one and done, Yeah, came in with a point, made it, left. So he's, he definitely learned that lesson. Definitely yes. learned a few lessons yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so look, like, uh, that's the sort of long, like, like this is why s- streaming initially was good for mm. long-form storytelling in mm. that, like, it was good for those sort of th- th- those stories that you couldn't tell with just like w- w- on an epi- episodic show, yeah. but also you needed longer than a movie. Yes, but n- n- like it's also completely destroyed the possibility of episodic s- TV shows that make it to a hundred episodes. Yes, no TV show created today will make it to a hundred hundred episodes. No. Even on network TV, you'd be lucky to make it 100, 100 episodes unless it's reality TV. Yeah. This is why streaming needs to be stopped or changed yeah. significantly. Mm. Netflix from now on are not going to be reporting their subscriber numbers, mm. just their profits. Yeah. So that's why we're going to get fucking ads. It's 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 going to turn into fucking... Yeah. 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 But, I mean, the, so the, 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 the whole thing was, like, the, the, what, what I think more than streaming specifically has been the whole idea of the binge and the and the release it all in one go. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's and, awful. Because, you know, it used to be, like, you know, you'd get the first couple out the door while the rest was still in production, the back half of the season was in. You, 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 you're getting them out there while you're still developing. But, and, 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 and also, and, like, and, it, it permeates, the like, the cultural zeitgeist yeah. much more than, like... like Lost is the best example it was yeah. because there was forums and there was fucking, mm. there was like Reddit threads. There was fucking mm. discussion ad nauseum for the, like each, for the entire week in between each episode. Yeah. Then the next one had come out and then there'd be more and more and more. Yeah. And like that would go on for 20 weeks yeah. until the next season. And in between the season, you'd still discuss it more. When was the last time you thought about Stranger Things? Yeah, I, 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 I'm end of season two, personally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Stranger Th- Things drops on a weekend. Everyone watches it. They talk about it on the Monday and they don't talk about it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and like, it's, it's, like, it's a good show. Like, season two was terrible. <laughs> season two was a bit shit, but like, it, it's still, it's still quite a good show. It was, it was, I, I just couldn't get into three at all after two. I just like, I was just like, I think I watched the first two episodes of season three and went, I just don't yeah. care at all anymore. I, 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 I was a bit like that, but um, like then somebody online said that it had gotten good. So I went back and watched it mm. all um, after, like, I think after the most recent season came mm. out and I was like, oh, actually this is quite, yeah. quite compelling now. Okay. But um, my, my, my point, my point is that it doesn't sort of stay in our collective consciousness. No. 
like there's no water cooler conversa- conversations about it because yeah. all the conversations is just, oh have you watched it you've oh you're you only up to that episode oh well I can't talk about it anymore yeah yeah no 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 that that, that that's fucked and I do appreciate the few shows that are still doing it but I think even the production methodology has changed to the point it's like here is a CS, here is a sum of money go back and bring us a season a completed product yeah and we'll market or just release that yeah. in some way as opposed to Make a pilot, we start like the pilot, get start, get 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 rolling on the first couple. We'll start airing those, and you bring us three before we're done. Yeah, and yeah, you know, and you you just keep rolling at the same time. We're rolling them out. Yeah, and that kind of staggered also leads to the fragility of like mid season cancellation, which like I'm sure we've all experienced and hate. Um, but True. at the same time, I think it was giving better results. Do you know the series that still does that? Mm-hmm. South Park. Mm. South Park has a t- has a weak turnaround for an episode. They do pride themselves on doing topical yeah. uh, immediately, like, um, 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 which the Simpsons look, absolutely cannot do because it's like two years behind yeah, yeah. In a lot of the time. Yeah, and like hate or love South Park, like I've I've gone through like waves of it, like where I've despised it, and and I've I've gone through waves of where I've loved it, and yeah. I think Trey Parker and Matt Stone are kind of. I've got my issues with them, like mm. in in their like contributions to fucking. Mm. Certain certain topics of discussion. I'm not going to get too yeah 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 no no in this, but but like I hate or love South Park. They do it right in that they have that sort of weak turnaround that everything is fresh and new and and like bingo bango like that. Yes, so same as like well, what late night TV in the US used to be, mm. where they were making a new episode every single night. And that was huge back in the day. Nowadays, not so much. Like, because we've got YouTube, we've got fucking streaming, we've got everything, late night TV doesn't have the same no, it's, thing. It's not... But also it's much more fucking packaged and commod- commoditized. Commoditized, yes. Commoditized. Commoditized sounds like yeah. a fair word. It, it, it's more of a fucking, th- oh, we've got to get this out so we can sell stuff. Like, like it's, it's the same as everything now. Everything is just such a fucking product that it has to make money and it doesn't matter if it's good as long as it makes money. Fucking subscribe to our Patreon. We 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 will we'll 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 sell underwear or whatever. If anyone wants to sponsor us, beer, underwear, hey, dick pills, you yep. name it. We'll we'll fucking do it. Please. Underwear, dick pills, nasal spray. Please, please, please. Mattresses. Please, I don't want to go to work again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh what what else are the the what else are the hip new kids selling on their podcasts these days? What I don't know. I don't listen to podcasts. No, me neither. Fuck fuck those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> a, just a couple of white dickheads talking about shit that no one cares oh, about. Oh fucking hell. Yeah. Anyway, um so that was Star Trek Avoid We were gonna do a special thing. We were. For and this and, 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 and we, we still might. We, we still like might. speaking of our Patreon, like we we, we probably will eventually do a, 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 like a commentary track. And we'll put that on our, our Patreon as an yeah, exclusive or something. Oh, we'll do like it for that. one of the other movies. I mean, I, th- I think it's a th- I think it's a concept that is worth exploring. We've got another movie coming up fairly soon, mm. like relatively soon. So we've got next episode is Future's End, mm-hmm. uh, Star Trek Voyager. Then we've got um, eleven fifty nine, which is again yep. Voyager. Um, then we've got. Carpenter uh, Street, the Enterprise, the Enterprise one, Carpenter Street. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about that one, Carpenter yeah. Street. We've, we've then we've got um, Picard yeah. season two, Picard season two, which, which we've which we've done. Um, we'll turn that into something. Well, yeah, it'll be out there. We yeah. we, we may look. I, I I dread to say this, but we may have to revisit Picard season two because I feel like. In the live show, you get sidetracked with stuff. Oh, and there's, absolutely. There's, like, there's stuff that I kind of want to talk about that happened in season two that, yeah. you, like, maybe we'll go back and revisit that one day, but that's future Demo's problem. Yeah. Um, it, then- might be, it might be a good interim thing because, like, I, we, we do kind of have a th- the, the idea, like, you know, of ending season one at Man. first contact. Yes, yes, we we, we because because that. then we then we become basically a Star Trek Enterprise podcast for a, yeah, for a while, <laughs> unless we change the rules. Yeah, but I don't know. I kind of am interested in exploring the, at least yeah. the first season. I mean, if, even if we do it in a couple of episode related chunks, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll figure out we'll figure out that in the season two pre production meeting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which we'll have at the pub probably. Yeah. 
at Theory um, Bar. But after we release season season two, we've got Past Tense coming up, which is another option, of, which is another opportunity for us to do kind of in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've <sighs> talked about it because it happens in September. In, all, in, all, in late August. August, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and given that's all our birthdays. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've well, done stupider things. Yeah. Anyway, so so yeah, that, that's what's coming up yeah. on how much for just the podcast because we're still doing this bullshit, no matter how many of you aren't listening anymore. Do we have some closing thoughts on Voyage Home? My only real closing thought is they don't make them like they used to, mm. and it's a shame because this was they fucking nailed it. Yeah, it was a fact. Like it's it's honestly, it's probably the most quoted as the favorite Star Trek movie. Yeah. It's either this or it's Wrath of Khan. Or First Contact. I, I mean, feel. Wrath of Khan was a good film. Yes. But it wasn't a fun film. No. Like, it, it was a good film. Like, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, it was a submarine thriller in space, yeah. which is what space con- combat probably should be rather than the whoosh, mm. whoosh, bang, bang, mm-hmm. pew, pew, Star Wars-y stuff. St- like, if, if you're putting it into context, uh, uh, into context um, Star Trek Wrath of Khan is Hunt for Red, o- Red October and Star Wars is Top Gun. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I absolutely think it makes sense. And yes, you're absolutely right. Anyway, um, I, th- I think there's even like, you know, Lucas is on record of like, you know, I mean, they, they, they did, didn't they do rough cuts of Star Wars with like, you know, World War II fighter yeah, pilot yeah, yeah. footage, it, like, you know, just like, um, just in, while they were waiting for the effect shots, they a, just filled it in with. There, there was like the dam breakers, fight, yeah, the dam insert breakers. Insert fight, or, fighter plane fight here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there, there, was, there was a movie called The Dam Breakers. Yeah. I, I think it was the. The Dam Busters? The Dam Busters. Yeah. That sounds better. Where they had to skip a little ride. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. to skip a little bomb along the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which right. is very, very Death Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and like that, that was literally like almost shot for shot, the same as like Star yeah. Wars, but with pew pew lasers. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're, we're getting, off, getting off track. We're doing final thoughts on the fucking yeah. movie. I, I, our final thoughts on the movie is all about another movie. Yes, pretty much. Like, it, it, anyway, it's, it's. I still say it's one of the most quotable Star Trek movies. Like, yeah. fucking. I still say, like, hello, computer. Like when I turn turn stuff on, I still say. Of course like, you fucking do. Yeah, of course I do. Just, <laughs> like nuclear vessels, like it, th- that's really Chekhov's most favorite. Oh, that, I mean, I, I'm sure people know that without even knowing exactly why why they know that. Yeah, yeah, and like uh, I only work in outer space. Yeah. Um, the uh, the doctor gave me a pill. I, gave, I grew a new kidney, and um, <laughs> it's, not now, Madeline. There's, someone on Twitter had like a production thing called "Not Now, Madeline." Based on that quote, <laughs> um, but anyway, like it's it was a good one. It's a good one, and Star Trek: The One with the Whales, probably the best one. Certainly the best one with the whales. So you've been listening to how much for just the podcast? My name's Damo. I'm still Mick. Uh, goodbye, computer. Where are we? Where are we? How much for just the podcast is a Grouse Media production. The theme music you heard was the Picard rap by Nikolai Kingsley. Where the hell are we? For all links to our stuff, we have lots of stuff, go to prettygrouse.com. There are four lights. Irrelevant. 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 Shut, 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 shut. My voice is a bit fucked. I don't know if, how this is going to get... Does it sound fucked? No, no, it sounds fine. It, it feels fucked coming out No, of you me. just sound a bit deeper and more manly than usual. Um, it's like, I, 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 reckon, I reckon the ladies listening to the podcast oh. are going to be into it. Hello there, ladies. <laughs> For a good time, call me. Or, like, tweet at me or... I don't know. Hello. <laughs> Why am I single? Who would know? <laughs>